love it, kill it. Five percenters, one day you may. You know, the five percenters is, is my thing. It's growing like crazy. And people don't know, it's basically, you know, 5% of the people in the world that are willing to do whatever it takes to reach their goals. And a lot of people, you know, don't understand that my stuff is motivational for everybody. It's not just bodybuilding. There's so much more to life than bodybuilding because there's so much more out there. The mentality to do whatever it takes to accomplish his goals. It's about a mentality, not a physicality. And too many people get that mixed up, you know, and they look at me and they're like, oh, I wish I was a five percenter. And it's like, it's, it's not about the body. You know, the body, the body is just a shell that we live in. And obviously I into that and I want to have the best shell I can, but more importantly, we have the inside and the mentality is what's going to make things happen. You know, is having that mentality to never give up, keep pushing forward. The way Rich speaks is as if he's a really wise, responsible, and intellectual man. And if we were only listening to those words, you know, it's not just bodybuilding, there's more to life than bodybuilding, or it's not about the body, the body is just a shell, you would think that if this was true and he honestly believed these things, that we wouldn't be here telling the story that we're about to tell today. We all know Rich Piana, or at least we've seen what he looks like and or heard some of the things he's said, like the whole eight-hour arm workout thing. He was one of, if not the biggest sensation in bodybuilding and fitness for a very long time. And if you've seen any of his videos, either the long form ones or the ones that people have clipped up to the modern era, you can tell he's a very motivational speaker. He has a lot of good common sense and things that can really help people out in difficult times. But I would argue that the way he portrayed himself, it's as if he knew he's made some very poor choices and yet wanted to be a good role model to others, yet couldn't truly take his own advice behind closed doors. Before we get into Rich's tragic story, for those of you who don't know him, his past is actually pretty crazy. Let's dig through his backstory a little bit, as I think it provides a ton of context to the things I'm about to say. Rich, much like Boston Lloyd, someone else we've talked about a few times on this channel, was thrown into bodybuilding at a very young age, visiting gyms as young as six years old alongside of his mother, who happened to also be a competitive bodybuilder and a pretty successful one. And when you grow up surrounded by a specific sport and the positive reinforcement that that sport can bring, it's not hard to fall in love with it and make it your reality. It becomes an extremely rewarding practice that's easy to fit into for you, and therefore becomes a very positive echo chamber for you to fall into a reoccurring behavior. Some might call it addictive. And that's what we saw from Rich at a very young age. Training at just the age of 11 alongside of his mom, and going to actually compete at just 15 years old, and shockingly winning his first national title as a Mr. Teen California. When you've had that much success as early on as Rich did, that's when the addiction turns south because you simply want to keep pushing the needle, right? literally, to see how far you can go. So as we see here, at just 18 years old, after blasting testosterone and DECA, which at the time was a very common bulking cycle, he had a physique most bodybuilders would be extremely jealous of. But the success of Rich had from such an early age never got to his head, nor did the steroids at least in the sense that they didn't give him some kind of psychotic rage in which we're seeing a lot these days. Because most people would attest to the fact that he was the most genuine person in the room. The first time that anyone generally saw Rich, they probably thought of him as a monster. But as soon as they get to know him and warm up a little bit to the guy, it's quickly noticeable that he's a very real person with some big philosophies that can help a lot of hurt people. His outward appearance didn't reflect his inward person at all. And he never considered himself above anyone else, was always welcoming to his friends, family, and newcomers to the industry. He wanted to motivate every person that he could and just simply make a huge impact on as much lives as possible. And he did that legitimately. And it's become the legacy that he's left and why so many people still idolize him to this day, even people who were into the fitness industry long after he passed. Millions of people will not ever forget Rich. They'll be constantly fond of his memory. And I believe that he'll kind of be the motivator in a lot of people's situations for improvement, not just through the words he says, but also the life that he lived. Of course, this is for the majority of people, a person that they've never even met in person and yet has so much power over their own intrinsic motivation. So, I mean, if we look at the things he's said and just analyze it objectively, it's very clear that Rich could have been a very powerful motivator and with no doubt, a great role model for a lot of people who lack one. You know, whatever it is in life, 
you can flip it and make it a good thing, you know, and a lot of times, you know, things might happen for a reason and you can look at it that way and, and you know, turn it into a positive and be happy with the situation, um, you know, and that's pretty much everything in life. So uh, anyway, I hope you guys can take that advice, be positive and keep pushing forward and, you know, the people out there that are negative, that, you know, all they have is negative shit to say, those are the people that are unhappy, you know, and that's why everything comes out negative. So stay positive, people. As you could tell, he cared about making a really positive impact in the world. I'm sure a lot of people remember that back in the day, he used to work at booths, and those booths would have lines and lines and lines wrapped around whatever expo event he was at. And he would stay until the very end, until he met and shook everybody's hand, no matter what or how late it had been. Even if the venues had closed, he made it a a very strong point to stay there until everyone got to meet him. Rich did a lot of amazing things with the fitness and bodybuilding industry. He left behind an amazing legacy, but unfortunately that wasn't the only legacy he left behind. To a lot of people, Rich Piana was an enigma, a sensational enigma. He was something totally new to the bodybuilding industry, but simultaneously something that was totally new to the general populations who were just really interested in fitness. No one had ever seen a physique so disgustingly large before, a literal mutant as the company he had was labeled after. Of course, there was open bodybuilding at the time with really amazing athletes like Phil Heath competing, but no one was quite like Rich because his size was just so disproportionate to many other bodybuilders. Not only that, but he was covered head to toe in tattoos, was perpetually spray tanned, and had those crazy light blue colored eye contacts. I mean, he was the Cali muscle with the eyes before Cali Muscle ever got the eyes. And his arms looked like they had basketballs implanted inside of them. Some of this might have been oil, which takes some context to explain, but briefly, people do inject oil into their arms to make them look bigger. If you just type in oil arms on Google and find a couple images, you'll see exactly what I'm talking about. But all things considered, he was a mass monster to no doubt. And for some people, that's all they saw. They never cared to give him the time of day and actually get to know him him because all they saw was this roided out monster who anyone would expect could drop dead in a matter of moments. And that not only gave bodybuilding a bad reputation with the general population, but it also really pissed off the bodybuilding community too. The fact that bodybuilding constantly tried to paint itself as a healthy thing, and despite the obvious not being true of that, Rich kind of just shat all over that with his extreme practices. That was part of his character though. It was truly his intention. He didn't really care about the reputation that followed him for what he did or what he said. He told the truth, even if it was a harmful truth, and he did what he wanted to do to get to the greatest extreme, explaining it very clearly to every one of his viewers. And to be honest, the way he saw it, I totally get it. Bodybuilding competitively shouldn't be everyone's goal, nor will it be. It would be great if people could want to get in shape for themselves, want to look good for themselves, and want to create the body that they feel is the body they want, you know, and not have to to appease 11 judges that they don't even know. So now am I gonna change my body and make my body the way you want my body to be when I don't even know you and you're not even in my life? So I'm gonna make my body the way I don't like it for a $10 trophy. But see, the thing is, is that the people that are competing are obsessed and addicted and they don't have any control. It's kind of like I'm in a room with 20 meth users and I'm trying to explain to them, you need to stop taking meth. The meth dealer doesn't give a fuck because he knows these 20 meth users aren't going to fucking listen. You know, they're addicted to the drugs and they're going to keep taking the meth. There's nothing you can do. So again, that's a very extreme example, but it's, it's true. You know, there's people are so addicted and I was at that point and so drawn in that they, they, they won't stop competing. What's the answer? The answer is I should be doing this for myself and I should be you know wanting to look the best I can look where I look in the mirror every day and I'm happy with myself you know I'm living I'm living in my skin you know but bodybuilding it's about appeasing those judges now let's look at what happened to Rich the rise to fame brought with him an army of new era bodybuilders those who couldn't care less for a competition they just wanted to look as freakish and unnatural as possible I mean if you take a look at the 5% nutrition team for just a moment which is Rich's supplement company that he developed before 
before passing, most of their representation falls under the exact category. Tattoos all over, veins in their arms, looking like absolute mutants to human society. One thing is for certain with this group is that no one was purely trying to be aesthetic, and Rich made an extreme effort to bring this side of bodybuilding to light, showing everyone what was required to look like this and why they thought it was such an interesting component of their life. So much so that even in face of the Olympia in 2015, held his wedding on the very exact day. And even then, he stayed 100% true to his character, getting a tattoo just hours before the ceremony, and then even cutting off the sleeves on the tuxes for the ceremony itself. Some people hated it, but at the very least, we know Rich played a role through thick and thin until death did his part. He was who he was, and no one could change this. Not sponsorships, money, people's opinions, or anything. See this? You know I take steroids, right? Well, it's something I've been doing, I'm gonna keep doing, and I'm never gonna stop. So you got a problem with me taking steroids? then we don't need a second date. But you see, the problem with Rich is that even though he had an amazing positive message, for him and many others, it easily turned into an unhealthy obsession, and as time went on, only further developed into an extreme addiction. For one person, doing whatever it takes might mean just waking up a little bit earlier than you would typically do, maybe cutting out junk food, or getting more cardio in, really just about anything to strive towards their goals outside of bodybuilding. But for Rich, what it was was doing anything he could to to look as monstrous as humanly possible. He wanted to have this tough exterior in fitness. He brought it there too. Nobody was bigger in life than Rich. He brought that image, but it was just an image, you know? Like it went as far as he was like, Mac, what do you think? I know a good surgeon if he just put like the scar across my neck, like I've been slit at the throat. It'll look bad ass. Say it'll look crazy as and I've talked about this before on this channel, it referring to Ilya Gollum, in fact, the other 5% nutrition athlete who died just at the age of his 30s, that Rich and his 5% community were some of the most wild athletes in terms of monstrous physiques, and truly the most unhealthiest people within the bodybuilding community. And so clearly, there is a lot of people who fall into the same boat as Rich Biana, and this way of life is very clearly unhealthy for several reasons, because just implying that you're going to do whatever it takes to achieve something that's quite unnatural does mean that there is some great health risks involved with doing such things. That um, did Rich have a drug problem? From, from what you know, man, when you can afford drugs and there's no limit, it's beyond a drug problem and addiction. He was addicted to pills, like pain pills. Um, oxy, roxy, and um, see, so gone now. It even got as bad to where he started playing around with Crystal. I said, Rich, that's gonna f your image up, and he'd be like, Mac, man, I, I just can't. It's hard because I can afford any drug I want in any amount. I said, yeah, just because you can don't mean that you should. So similar to Ziz, who a lot of people know and love, it seems like we have a pretty clear understanding, and it shouldn't come as a surprise the fact that mixing gear with party drugs, amphetamines, or opioids is basically a guaranteed path to death. But this is by no stretch the limit of what Rich was putting into his body either. Is this it, something that you've used? You I, use I have used synthol. I used it, you know, probably 12 years ago, and I didn't like it. You know, it. it it, it blurred my muscles, it made my muscle look weird, and it was incredibly painful, and it's very hard to train. You, you're you almost guaranteed gonna have to take some painkillers while you train, because it's so painful. So supposedly Rich wasn't using synthol up until near when he died, but what is suspected he was using, and it's the same stuff that Ilya Gollum was using, is PMMA, which if you didn't know, is a certain type of cosmetic filler that promotes your own collagen synthesis in affected areas, therefore increasing the overall volume below the skin and subsequently decreasing any texture visible on the skin. I mean, really, you can't tell me that any amount of of gear is going to make someone's arms look like this, even if they're taking obscene amounts of steroids like they were. Rich looks unnatural, even for an unnatural human being. You know what I mean? Like, his muscles didn't look normal. They look inflated, swollen, even tumorous at times. And that was in part due to the PMMA. And if you think about it, whenever anyone saw Rich, he was the same size basically all of the time. A pump didn't really
really changed his physique and he never really downsized at all. He was that size year round and that's because his muscles were practically fake. If there's one guy we can trust in this industry to get to the bottom of just about any investigation, it's John Bravo. And it turns out in Rich's case, he had insider information that no one else quite had either. No, listen, his whole body was filled with something. I know what was actually in him and I know that it can cause death in people. His whole body was filled with silicone. He used to go to South America at first to have it done. Right. Everyone thought it was this uh, other bullshit PPM. Oh, what was that? I forget the uh, other yeah, substance. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It wasn't. It, he used to go to South America. Okay. Right. And in South America, he used to get it done. Then he, and when he was in LA, he met this transsexual lady who used to do it out of her house. That's and then he learned it, how to do it. And then he did it to himself. Uh, babe, I have photos of him actually doing it. His calves, his back, his shoulders, his arms, his chest, Ugh. everything. His ass was all silicone. Really? And listen, you have to talk to a plastic surgeon. Okay. Silicone is the most dangerous thing to put in your body. If it gets into your bloodstream, you can die. And I'm, women get fucked from just doing their ass. Imagine your whole body fucked. What John Bravo goes on to say, which is 100% true, is that the fact women can suffer extreme consequences just from getting a boob job or their ass done. Imagine a risk you're placing on yourself when it's essentially the foundation of your entire physique. So whilst a lot of people can speculate about how Rich died, whether it was heart disease, steroids, or other drugs, so on, it's extremely likely that some of the silicone had entered his bloodstream and that very well could have caused his death. I feel like I do need to look a certain way for my fans. You know, if I'm sitting here and I'm telling you this and telling you that, well, I better be following that shit too. You know, I can't show up, you know, saying you got to do this, you got to do that. And then I look like shit, you know, what, what is that? So, you know, for me to be able to educate and help people and motivate people, you know, I need to look good myself. Unfortunately, this does seem to be an extremely prominent issue within the bodybuilding community and fitness at large. That because if you had your popularity rise due to your physique, well, it had now become your occupation to maintain an amazing physique year round, even if it caused massive health issues. Because the moment that you don't have that physique, everyone tells you you've fallen off and you realistically do lose a lot of followers if it's the sole basis of what you provided to the internet. And this issue doesn't just cost a person their reputation, but it also costs them brand deals, sponsorships, and even collaborations with larger businesses. For a lot of people, their whole career in this space is standing on a certain way to look, and it's an unfortunate reality, truly. And very clearly, it's damaging to a lot of people, and they aspire to be successful influencers without realizing the commitment that it might just take. But it's also very evident that what Rich was doing wasn't just for the sake of winning over his fans. If that was the case, he wouldn't have been killing himself with other drugs behind closed doors that have zero cosmetic effect. Now, I don't think anyone will ever come close to the way that Rich was enhancing his body. But if you really think about it, he's not that much different from some of the influencers we have today that we've also touched on in this channel, such as Togi. In fact, he's not that much different at all from Togi. Obviously, it's very clear that Rich wasn't being a degenerate for influencer fame, but a lot of their drug habits and lifestyle habits in general are very similar. And the unfortunate thing is that the community around these individuals really supports this kind of behavior and encourages them to continue it. We had Toji and Cody Copa, a literal 14 year old. And then you see videos like this. Do you ever take steroids at any point? Probably not, honestly. You seem like you were thinking about it though. Yeah. So you've been tempted at one point? I mean, a little, obviously. I mean, I want to get huge like you, but... <laughs> How old are you? I'm like 17. You're 17 and you've been thinking yeah. about it? Well, kind of, because like, obviously because social media and everything, right? Like, I go on TikTok and all I see is like Jack dudes and everything. Yeah. Like, I could probably go on Instagram right now and the first thing I'm going to see is probably like, what? Jack dude. See, like, it's right yeah. there. Yeah, first, first picture is a Jack dude. Like, it's just right there. And at this point, it makes you question whether every young person in the fitness community thinks that steroids are their path to fame. It's an unfortunate reality, but if you look outside of the whole bodybuilding lens and view it as nothing more as pretty privilege, it's a very real thing. I mean, have you ever seen an unattractive woman become hugely Instagram famous? Maybe, but in comparison to all the women who get famous for just looking good, it's a one in a million chance. And so girls slap on pounds of makeup and foundation 
clothing to hide their true face. They get injections, lip fillers, boob jobs, BBLs, all to make themselves look somewhat unrealistic to garner more attention on social media. I mean, we're talking things as extreme as jaw surgery, cat eye surgery, eye lifts, facelifts. The, the numerous amounts of surgeries that some females can do is quite absurd. And all of this is to just blow up in some way for attention. Now, if you circle back to the bodybuilding and fitness industry, it isn't far off because people blast synthetic drugs to look a certain way, as well as, in Rich's case, inject oils into their arms to inflame them and make them look significantly bigger, all for the sake of popularity. Thankfully for Rich's case, while he might have looked so juiced that he could have literally pissed Pierre Trenbolone, he didn't go around glorifying gear. In fact, he often discussed the dangers of using it. The thing is, is I can't really say I'm for steroids, but I'm not really against steroids. You know, it's a personal choice. I I'm really against young kids taking steroids, you know, teenagers, um, even in your early 20s. It's, I'm really against that. And once you start taking steroids, your testosterone levels, your testes shut down and they no longer work. So your body is not producing testosterone anymore. And, you know, if you shut down your production at an early age, it's never going to come back to what it was. And he also had some substance to his character in which he tried to provide a positive impact on people's lives. And I think that is a thing that the fitness industry is completely missing today. And it stratifies the fitness industry of old age from the modern era. Of all the people who've blown up on social media in the last couple of years, only an extremely small amount of them will ever actually be able to say they made a positive impact on another person's life because of the fact that we've made so many wrong people famous at this point. And it's not the creators who need to get better. People say it's the creators who are glorifying steroids that are the problem, but for those who think that, sure, you're right that they're contributing to the issue, but I think you're missing one major aspect. Just think about the ones who are allowing them to have a platform in the first place. It's their audience. And so you might think a guy like Rich and Toji could be potentially ruining our industry, but the ones who are actually capable of completely changing this ubiquitous stain on the industry are the viewers at large. If these viewers were to choose a different path in their content consumption, as well as promote better behaviors within the comment section of videos where there is really inappropriate behaviors, we might be all over a better place. Rich, from a very young age, aspired to be a mass monster. It was clear once his mother brought him into the gym that he was obsessed with working out, going to several bodybuilding competitions, and even competing at some of the highest, most competitive shows without ever having actually won his pro card. Then moving into more of a commercial aspect where he started his own businesses and became very successful as an entrepreneur and one of the first fitness creators, his desire never changed to get massively huge. But it was this exact desire that led to his death. Whether the death was actually caused by being huge or some other drugs that he was using, rumors say that he was inhaling pre-workout for instance, I don't think that matters as much as I think most people People who would have been a healthy body mass index likely wouldn't have died from the things that he was doing. And so all of this to say, I think the main point of this video and what I'm trying to tell you is that our viewership does matter. Who we view as content is a really big indication of where the times are heading. And if you or someone that you know makes a decision to watch something that's more viable compared to somebody gambling away their whole life savings just for viewership, well, I think you're going to make the world a much better place, at least the specific industry we're talking in, which is the fitness industry. But what do you think? Let me know down below. I love reading your comments and would appreciate if you actually left some. Also, subscribing to the channel helps me out and it's completely free to you and I would seriously appreciate it if you did.